Do your students know the copyright rules or are they fuzzy? Most of us spend a significant amount of time making sure our students understand plagiarism, but are we doing enough to educate our students about the rights as owners of their work and protecting the rights of others? As teachers, we lead by example. How often do you use a photo from Google Images? Our students might assume because we are doing it, they can too. Technically, it is legal for us to use copyrighted pictures, movie clips, or songs in the classroom if the material is used for educational purposes. We have this privilege due to the Fair Use in the TEACH Act. However, outside of the classroom, use of those materials breaks the law. It is important to explain to the students that sharing copyrighted content outside of the classroom is illegal. Google is designed to be a search engine, not a photo repository. Google Images look like a photo repository and the pictures are easy to copy. We need to explain the rules to our students. If a student uses images without permission in their presentations, after class they might be tempted to email them to mom or to an employer or post them on Facebook. At that point they've crossed the line and broken the law. Copyright holders and their attorneys have become more aggressive about enforcement. It is naive to think you won't get caught or sued. We need to inform our students and show them a solution. Creative Commons is a nonprofit organization that enables the sharing and use of creativity and knowledge through free legal tools. Creative Commons licenses are not an alternative to copyright. They work alongside copyright and enable you to modify your copyright terms to best suit your needs. There is a community of people that have created work they want to share. In the middle right hand side of the screen, you'll see an Explore tab. This is an area to go to when you're looking for material you can legally use. After you click on the Find CC License Works tab, you'll be brought to this screen. Notice where the arrow is pointing. Most of the time, you or your students will be searching for materials that you don't plan to sell, you just want to borrow them. So you would unclick the Use for Commercial Purposes tab. On the flip side of that, this is a way for artists to share their work, and if someone wants to use it in a marketing campaign, they have a way to find your work and contact you. The Modify, Adapt, or Build Upon tab is very important to pay attention to. This is a strict rule. If a photo is posted as no modifications, and I want to put words on top of it for a presentation, I cannot. So you might want to keep that tab checked. This will give you flexibility to modify the material. I start with Flickr for photos and start with Jamendo when searching for music. Earlier, you saw the results from Google Images when I searched for Monkey. This is the beginning of the search results in Flickr when I search for pictures I can use for non-commercial purposes and have permission to modify or build upon. I really like that one in the middle, so I'm going to click on that. When you're in Flickr and right-click on a photo, you'll see symbols that explain the rights. You can then choose which size of the photo to download. Warning! You will be tempted to do your second search in this search tab. You're now in Flickr. If you search this engine, you'll be searching all of Flickr, and your results are going to include photos that are fully copyrighted, meaning you don't have permission to use them. The photographer or business posted the photo to advertise their work or their business. It may not have a CC license. It's best to click back on your search browser or somehow go back to creativecommons.org for your second search. At the bottom of the picture, you'll find all the information needed to properly cite the image. Credit should always be given to the photographer. The license should be noted. Ideally, you also need to provide a link back to the picture in Flickr. Let's go back and look at those rights. I want to explain those little symbols. You can get to an explanation of the licenses from each photo. The attribution is just explaining we're given credit. In academia, we always give credit to the source. Non-commercial, you understand. Don't use this in a project you're going to make money off of unless you're given permission by the author to do so. The share alike needs some further explanation. If you use products with a share alike permission, then you must put a share alike CC license on the work you're going to use the image in. If you're working on a project that you don't intend to CC license, then you cannot use the share alike materials. It's kind of a version of the golden rule. I've shared this with you. If you want to use it, you must share with others. When I do the copyright lesson in class, I also explain to the students 
how they would share permission to show their work. When students put a CC license on their work, that helps me have examples for future classes. I encourage the students to allow modifications. What if I want to put together a presentation of best slides? I can't unless I have permission to modify or build upon. Of course I don't plan to profit from their work. I clicked on the share like feature so you can see what the symbol looks like. A student could hand write CC by NCSA on their work or copy and paste the gray box and the text underneath it. These symbols allow us to identify when someone is giving permission versus having to contact them and hope they respond. This also frees up the author from having to answer hundreds of requests for permission. You can share something and still make money off of it later, but you can't revoke the rights of those that are using it from when you first put a CC license on it. This copyright lesson has a CC license. You can freely share it as long as you give credit. You can modify it, don't use it for commercial purposes, and please share a like anything you use it in. Thank you. Have a great day.